Good morning. Hi, how are you? I hope you're well. Uh, I hope you're not too bored with this lockdown, nearly lockdown, whatever it is now. Um, if you are, don't worry, we're going to fix that for you this morning because this is going to be jam-packed. We have got stunts, sort of. We've got special effects. We've got Josh being rude again. Did I mention the special effects? Great, okay, well, now that we've blown the entire budget on that first little section, we're gonna have to be really creative with what we do for the rest of the morning, so off we go. For the past few weeks, we've been looking at the subject of heroes. Yummy. Excuse me. Very good. And so far, we've covered a lady called Esther. And? Joseph. Yes! And? Gideon! Hello? And? Daniel. And don't forget... The story of Ruth. And this week, we're going to be looking at... Batman! Sorry, I wasn't listening. I've just been batmailing on my bat phone. Aha, the bat phone. Someone needs my help. Oh, hi, Josh. Um, I'm live on YouTube. Yeah, I, I know, Dan. I, I, I'm watching it right now. Um, I thought we spoke about this. Batman's not in the Bible. Are you sure? I thought you said he might be in one of the minor prophets. No, Dan, he's 100% not in the Bible. I'm telling you now, you can't do a session on Batman, OK? Oh, oh OK, Josh. It's just he's my favourite superhero. You know? Dan, I can see you on my screen. Can you just stick to the theme, please? The theme is Heroes of the Faith, which means no Superman, no Batman, no other heroes from the Marvel Universe. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. O okay, Josh, I get it. No Batman, no Batman. Okay, but Dan, please try and not mess this up, okay? John and Debbie do watch this. It's okay, Josh. I mean, y you can trust me. Okay, well, bye, Dan. Bye, Josh. All right, okay, let's just start again. So, we're looking at heroes of the faith, and this week we're going to look at the Apostle Paul. Now, who was Paul, and what made him a hero of the faith? Well, let's use the wonders of modern technology to recreate an authentic style interview with the man himself. Hello, hello, can you hear me? How to switch off mute? Um, oh no, wait, no, no, it's working. Hello, uh, my name's Paul. Hello, Paul. It's good to have you with us. Tell us a bit about yourself. What do you well, do? Well, um, I'm intense. I know you're intense. I've read Romans, but what do you do? No, no. I mean, I'm intense. I mean, as in, I'm a tent maker. I make tents. Oh. And I was one of the earliest Christian believers right after Jesus left to go back to heaven. But that wasn't always the case, though, was it, Paul? No. No, uh, it's true. In fact, originally I really hated Christians and I tried to have them all killed. Uh, and my name was actually Saul to begin with. So, what happened? Well, I was travelling to a place called Damascus and I saw a very bright light and I heard Jesus speak to me from heaven. And it completely changed my life. I mean, I realised I'd got it all wrong. So instead of trying to get rid of the Christians, I started to tell other people about Jesus. Wow, that's quite dramatic. Yes, yes, it was completely incredible. Uh, in fact, I wanted to tell everyone about my new faith. So I started travelling all over to spread the word. Oh, and I wrote some stuff too. A writer? That's fascinating. Anything I might have read? Uh, well, a few books. Well, I say books. Letters, to be honest. Uh, they're in the Bible, uh, in the New Testament. I'm, I'm sorry, did you just say that you wrote part of the Bible? Yes, uh, maybe as much as about a quarter of the New Testament. Hang on. So you're telling me that you wrote a large part of the most read words in the history of the world, ever? Well, you know, one doesn't like to blow one's own trumpet. Well, let me blow it for you. That's astonishing. Who did you write to? Uh, to the various churches that I started and that I helped to lead all across the known world at the time. Wow, you were really important. You must have been so popular. I bet you were treated like a celebrity. <laughs> well, not so much. Uh, I was generally in prison quite a lot. Oh. So now, can you tell us a silly story about yourself or, or do a funny dance? 
video conferencing. It's amazing. So now we know quite a bit about Paul. We know that he started churches, that he traveled around telling people about Jesus, and that he wrote lots of the Bible. He was definitely a hero of the faith. Now we're gonna head over to Luke and Anna who are going to tell us about a verse in the Bible that helps us understand how Paul lived. Thanks, Dan. Yes, so Paul was a hero of the faith because he followed the instructions. Okay, so to be a hero of the faith, you just have to follow instructions. Wait there, I've got this. So if I follow these instructions Ooh. in here from Paul Hollywood and make this yeah. really nice apple Luke, tart. Not, not these kind of instructions. Oh. So not like instructions in like a recipe, but, but more like directions. Wait there. So if I follow these directions that I really want with maps. Ooh. Not those kind of, no, not, okay. not, um, not directions. So okay. Paul was given instructions by... Okay, so it's instructions that you're given, like personally. I've got this. So... When you gave me instructions on Friday and gave me the shopping list and I went and did the shopping, you that no, makes me not a hero. quite not quite that either. So okay. let me explain. So Paul was given instructions by Jesus, um, and we can find these instructions written down in the Bible. Shall we look? Yes. So in the book of the Bible called Matthew. In chapter 28, we can see the instructions. And if we read from verse 19 to verse 20, we can see them. Let's have a go. So, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So these are the instructions that Paul was following. Can I have a look? Yeah. That were given to him by Jesus yeah. here. Oh, we, we could do this too. Yes. So, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? So Paul told people about Jesus and they became followers of Jesus, obeyed all Jesus' yeah. commandments and he was with them forever. Mm, yeah. Now I see why Paul really was a hero of the faith. <laughs> so, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Brilliant. Now we know why Paul wanted to tell people about Jesus so much and why we might want to do the same thing. But is there anything else we should know? Well, I think we need a game to establish more of the facts. It's going to be a simple game of true or false. All you have to do is decide whether each statement is true or surprisingly false. Paul was blinded by a bright light. Paul was in the original boy band. Paul was imprisoned four times. Paul was bitten by a radioactive spider. Paul was shipwrecked. Paul was bitten by a poisonous snake. Paul invented the internet. Paul discovered America. Paul preached for so long that someone fell asleep and out of a window. Paul built a magnificent building in the centre of London. It's false! It's true! It's false!
Great job, Martha. Thank you so much. How did you get on? You got one to three. Small round of applause. Three to six. I think you should do uh, a little Mexican wave like that or like that. And then if you got seven, eight or nine, I think you should probably do the swim. And if you've got 10 out of 10, you've got to jump up and down, go crazy and run around the room. So now we know loads about Paul and his amazing life, but what does that actually mean for us? Well, God used Paul to break down barriers so that other people could find out more about him and get to know him. And we can do that too. But how, I hear myself ask? Well, we might not be able to travel the world like Paul did, and we may never write letters that are read by millions and millions of people, but we can help our friends get to know Jesus. We can help to get rid of the barriers that stop people from knowing him. That does sound awesome, Dan. Nice jumper, by the way. Oh, thanks. So, this morning we've learned all about Paul and why he was a hero of the faith. He loved to tell people about Jesus, and we've also learned why that would be a good thing for us to do too. But I get that might seem a little bit scary. So let's spend a little bit of time in prayer, just thinking about all those people who we would love to come to know Jesus. Let's also ask God to give us the courage or the right words to help them come to know him. Father, we thank you for people like Paul who are so good at spreading your word, who are so good at telling others about you and helping them to become your friend. Just take a moment to think about those friends and family of yours and think about the opportunities you may have to help other people know Jesus. Lord, there are people that we would love to become your friend too. They may be our friends or our family, and Lord, we would love them to know all about you. So we ask that you would help us to learn to be more like Paul. Amen. Well, guys, I hope that's been really helpful. I hope you've learned about another hero of their faith, the Apostle Paul. Um, I hope it's helped you think a bit about how you might talk to other people about Jesus too. It's been great hanging out with you. So that's it for this week. I uh, hope you have a brilliant week ahead and hope to see you all soon. Uh, yeah, super. Bye. Bye now. Bye. Still waving. <laughs> yeah, bye. Yeah, you can turn it off. Bye. It's getting awkward. See ya. Bye. Oh, I've got to stop the camera. <laughs>